Hey everybody! In the last video, I showed you how to install and open Outfit Studio with MO2. Today, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Outfit Studio, and then in the next video, we'll start putting this knowledge to use. This is going to be a video for beginners. I will assume that you don't know anything about using Outfit Studio yet, so I will be going slow and explaining in detail. If that's not what you're looking for, then this video is probably not for you. I'm using the latest version of Outfit Studio as of this recording, which is V5.6.0. Be sure to check out the resources on the Body Slide mod page. I'll put the link in the description. You can find out lots more about the Outfit Studio tool and functionality from the links and documentation that's available there. And if you haven't done so already, head over there now to endorse this great tool and show some love to the mod authors Osnius and Caliente. Here's a quick list of the main functions and tools that I'm going to review in this video. Note that this is not a comprehensive list of what Outfit Studio can do. This is just some of the most common things that you'll use. Many of the Outfit Studio buttons are contextual, meaning that you'll get additional options to use depending on which button you have selected. The things shown on this list are also included in the Outfit Studio tooltips, so you don't need to keep a copy of this unless you find it especially useful. There are also many more keyboard shortcuts, so look through the Outfit Studio menu and buttons if you prefer to use those. All right, let's get started. Step one, if you don't already have it open, open Outfit Studio and be sure that it's running through your mod manager as appropriate, or you may not be able to see your outfit textures. Refer to my previous video on installation if you don't know what that means. Next, let's bring in an outfit so we can test out all the different buttons and functions. Open Windows Explorer and navigate to where your Skyrim mod folders are located. I suggest pinning this folder to the quick access bar here if you have not already done so. It will make your life so much easier. Find any outfit mod that you have and double click its main folder. I'm going to scroll down here and use the UNP Armors mod. Then double click to open the Meshes folder and keep opening subfolders as needed until you find an outfit file. It will end in .nif, assuming you have file extensions showing, which I highly recommend. Select a file, try to grab the main outfit if you can, and then drag and drop it into the white space in Outfit Studio. You can also load in NIF files and other types of mesh files the long way by using File, Import, and choosing the file type and then navigating to it. Here you can see the types of files that Outfit Studio can handle. But I generally just drag and drop files in since it's quick and easy. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here in Outfit Studio and talk about navigating around the window. On the right hand side, we've got different tabs for the different activities that you can do. Meshes for most of your work, including the 3D modeling. Bones for weighting the mesh. Partitions for setting which part of the body the mesh is associated with. And colors and lights, which I've never used, so I'm not going to talk about those. I will talk about the bones and partitions tabs in later videos. For now, click back on the meshes tab and let's go over all the ways that we can view and edit our meshes. First, here you can see the names of each mesh piece. If you click on one, it will make it the active mesh. You won't really be able to tell this unless you turn on the vertex tool over here on the left, which is the little pencil. Click on that now, and you should see a bunch of green dots show up. Those are the vertices. Now with the pencil on, Click through the mesh names on the right, and you can see that each one becomes active when you select it. You can select more than one mesh piece at a time over here on the right, using Shift-Click to select them all, or Control-Click to select them one at a time. All the selected ones will be highlighted, 
and they will all be active, even though the vertices are only shown for the last piece that you clicked on. You can also change the view of the mesh pieces by clicking the little eyeball next to each one. Click once to hide it, click again to turn it to wireframe, and click again to get it back to the solid textured view. As you can see here, the view changes for all of the meshes that you've selected at the same time. If you double click on a mesh name or right click and select properties, you can see and change things like the shader settings and the texture paths and other things about the mesh. If you don't know what any of this is right now, that's okay. We'll cover most of these things in later videos. One last thing to note is that you can always do those things over here on the right, no matter which tool button you have selected up here at the top of Outfit Studio. Now move your mouse into the window where we can see the outfit. If you scroll the wheel up and down, you'll zoom in and out. If you want to get a really close up look at the mesh, you may need to change the field of view, which is up here in the top right. If you slide this to the left, it will narrow the view, which is really helpful if you're working on small pieces like rings. Now if you want to rotate the view of the outfit, click and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. You'll see the outfit rotating in the window. If you want to move the outfit around in the window, press and hold the mouse wheel and then move the mouse around. Note that both of these only move the view, not the actual position of the outfit, which is good. Most of the time, we don't want to move the position of the body or the outfit itself. There are exceptions and we'll talk about some of those in later videos. One last thing about navigation. These buttons over here on the left can help if you lose your outfit in the window or you just want a quick click to recenter. This one shows the front, this one the back, this one the left, and this one the right. This cube changes the perspective view. I always leave this clicked on, but you can use whichever view you prefer. Now one of the best parts is that you don't have to remember all this. If you forget what any of the buttons do in Outfit Studio, just hover over them and they'll show you tooltips. Okay, those are the main buttons that I use for navigation. Next up are the selection options. There are two main buttons that I use for selecting meshes and vertices. The first is what I call the main pointer tool. Here you can see that with this button selected, I can just click on pieces of my outfit to select them. Now, unlike selecting meshes by their names on the right, where you can use control or shift to select multiple pieces, you can't do that with this button and clicking. You can only select one mesh piece at a time in the main window. In addition to selecting mesh pieces, this button also allows you to select vertices, which again are the little green dots that make up each mesh shape. Right now, all the dots are green, which means they're all selected, so this button does nothing. But we can do a reverse function by holding down control and clicking on a vertex to deselect it. It will turn red. If you hold down control and keep clicking to deselect more vertices, see how they all turn red? <laughs> or then you can let go of control and click on the red vertices to reselect them and they will turn green again. If you want to select multiple vertices in an area, the next tool is a better option. Click up here on the top of this button that has a white square overlaying a black circle. This is the masking tool but it's also used to select and deselect vertices. You'll see that once you select this tool, a red circle will appear on the screen when you mouse over the active mesh. Click where the red circle is and you can see a bunch of vertices turn red. You have deselected all of those vertices, which is also how we mask them. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can hold down the mouse button and drag to continue deselecting vertices wherever the red circle touches. If you want to make this red circle bigger or smaller, hold down the S key on your keyboard while scrolling the mouse wheel forward or back. Just like we did with the main pointer tool, 
we can reverse the function of the masking tool. At this time, we hold down Alt to do that. Hold down the Alt key and now click and drag your mouse around. Anything the red circle touches will now turn green again, meaning that we have reselected those vertices. You can invert the selected and deselected vertices by coming up here to Tool and choosing Invert Mask, or by using Control plus I as a shortcut. You can see when we do that that what was red is now green, and what was green is now red. We can clear this all together by coming up here to Tool and choosing Clear Mask, or by using the shortcut Control plus A. Do that now and everything should be back to green. Two other useful buttons when you're selecting and deselecting vertices are the A key and the D key. If you mouse over the active mesh so you can see the red circle again, and then click once, to select some vertices. Now hit the D button on your keyboard several times and see how it automatically deselects or turns red more of the adjacent vertices. Now hit the A key on your keyboard several times and this will select or turn green more of the adjacent vertices. Now the best thing about these quick keys is that they have smart functionality. You can use them to easily select or deselect vertices that are linked. For example, if I come in here and I just select one vertex on this shawl, and then I hit the D key repeatedly, you can see how it automatically masks all of the vertices in the shawl and only in the shawl. And then if I keep hitting D or if I hit A, nothing more happens. You can also alternate both of these keys for more precise selecting. So let's say I want to select just this pouch and I make a messy click like this where I have some vertice vertices on the pouch and some on the robe. If I hit D, I can apply the mask to more of those vertices until the pouch is all covered. And now if I hit A, it will deselect all the extra ones on the robe, but leave the pouch completely masked. Another easy use of A and D is that the Smart Select works really well on rows of vertices. So let's say, for example, I wanted to get rid of part of these legs. What I could easily do here is just select one row of vertices on the legs. And now, if I hit the D key, you can see how it's selecting or masking adjacent rows of vertices. And if I hit the A key, in similar fashion, it adds them back in row by row. The beauty of using the A key and the D key in this way is that it's not always obvious if you've accidentally grabbed an unwanted vertex or not. Like here, if I want to select this amulet, you can see I can very carefully come in here and click these vertices that are green. Such that I think I have the amulet all selected or masked. But if I move this object, Oh yeah, look, you can see I clearly have something uh, missing or something wrong here. There's a vertex that uh, I need to have selected, but I couldn't actually see it through all of that. But now, if I use the D key again, it will mask anything that's linked. And if I move this robe again, you can see we have a nice clean break. This doesn't work on everything, as it requires vertices to somehow be linked or not linked. And it's not clear to me how that is determined. I thought it was the UV map, but that does not seem to be the case. If anybody knows, please leave a comment to let the rest of us know.
Before we move to the next set of tools, I want to tell you a little bit more about the masking tool. You've noticed that we can use this tool to make the vertices red wherever the brush touches. And that means we are deselecting the vertices, which also masks them or hides them from being affected. So if you want to move some vertices but not others, then we would mask the ones we want to leave alone. And you saw an example of that in the previous section. Similarly, if we want to make some parts of the mesh bigger or smaller, but leave some parts alone, we can use this to mask the vertices that we would like to leave alone. You can mask vertices from most functions in Outfit Studio. And as you've already seen, when either vertices or meshes are masked, they will show as red vertices and as dark colored sections on the mesh, depending on which of the views you have active. For now, let's just clear the masking and finally do something interesting to this outfit. Outfit Studio comes with two tools that make it easy to expand or contract parts of the mesh, which is a function you'll be using a lot. Up here at the top, we've got the Inflate tool. It looks like a circle with a bubble coming out of it. And the Deflate tool, which looks like a circle with a bite taken out of it. Click the Inflate tool button then put your mouse against the mesh so you see the red circle appear, indicating the area of the mesh that's going to be affected. Now hold down the left mouse button and slide your mouse up and down and you can see the area inflating. You may notice that it is inflating on both sides of the body, not just where you are pointing your mouse. And that's because we have this mirror tool turned on over here on the left. It looks like two balls with a line between them. This is good to turn on when your mesh is symmetrical because it means that any change you make to one side of the mesh will also be made on the other side. You can click this on and off as needed. For now, we're going to leave it turned on. Now go up to the top and find the white curved arrow pointing to the left. That's the undo button. It's going to be one of your best friends. Click it now. And you may have to click it quite a few times to undo all the changes that you've already made. After you've undone your inflate changes, click on the deflate tool and do the same thing so you can see how that affects the mesh. You can see how it pushes the mesh in now. After you're done, undo those changes so you're back to the original mesh. You can change the size and strength of the brush that you're using by clicking up here on Brush Settings. Or you can press the space bar to bring up the same menu. I'm not actually sure what focus and spacing do, but feel free to play around with those and see how they might be useful to you. Another really useful tool I want to show you is the transform tool over here on the left. It's a circle with the little white arrows. It looks kind of like a clock. Click on that and you should see the blue, green, red transform tool appear over your mesh. This represents the 3D axes, X, Y, and Z. You don't really have to know about all that. Just know that it's the three directions, up and down, side to side, and forward and back. Before we play around with this, I suggest that you click back on the main select button for now. Otherwise, this red circle is going to keep popping in and out of your view. Okay, this transform tool does a number of things. You can see when you move your mouse over it that different sections of it will turn yellow. The part that turns yellow is the active part of the tool. If you put your mouse over one of the little arrowheads, have it turn yellow so it's active, and then click and drag, you can see it will move the mesh along that selected axis. If you do the same to one of the circles, it will rotate the mesh around the axis. And if you click and drag on one of the little boxes, it will resize the mesh along that axis. You can resize the mesh proportionally along all three axes by clicking and dragging the black box in the middle of the tool. When you're done trying that out, click undo until the mesh is back to the original. 
Before we wrap up, there are just a few more functions that I want to quickly show you. Click over here first to turn the Transform tool off. Now back up at the top, next to the Deflate button, are some additional buttons that you might find useful. The first is a tool you can use to move vertices around, and it limits the movement to be parallel to your view, like this. The next tool, which looks like a fuzzy ball, is the Smoothing tool. It does pretty much what it says, and is helpful for aligning vertices to produce a more uniform look. And way over here is the Vertex Movement button. When you click that on, you'll get some additional buttons down here on the left, and these will allow you to adjust individual vertices by merging or welding them together, moving them in free form or in specific ways depending on which options you choose. This can be very useful for fine mesh work. The other button over here is the Undiff tool. This one you won't get to use until you're using sliders in Outfit Studio, but it's awesome for making slider conversion work even smoother. So here you can see if I use a slider to change the shape of this dress mesh, that it gets distorted in certain areas, particularly down here. But I can use the Undiff button up here to actually undo that strange slider distortion. And this is going to make your life a lot easier when we actually get to doing these types of conversions. And that's it for this video. Those are the main things that I think you'll need for your 3D modeling in Outfit Studio. There are some additional buttons and tools that I didn't cover, so feel free to keep exploring and playing around to learn all the things you can do with this great program. When you're done trying out all the different tools, you can just close out of Outfit Studio and don't worry about saving anything yet. Next time, we will put these tools to use for some meaningful work. In the meantime, I recommend that you just mess around in Outfit Studio and get some practice. You will get better with time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.